Yes, I'm a construction worker, and um, I hurt my back. He said that my uh, cartilage damage is permanent. Is there anything that can be done? Well, first of all, how old are you? I'm 28 years old. And what do you normally take for fluid replacement when you're working out in construction? What do you drink during the day? Uh, water, Gatorade. You don't drink any soft drinks? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, because normally construction workers drink a couple of liters of Pepsi a day, right? Yeah, I can probably put down a liter for you. <laughs> and did you take any vitamins or minerals while you were working in construction? Um, just recently started. Well, when you were in construction prior to the no. back problems? No. Yeah, a lot of con construction workers will tell me, well, Doc, if it ain't in the Pepsi, I don't get it, <laughs> right? <laughs> and so uh, you're a perfect candidate for the pig arthritis formula plus the EFA. You need all 90 essential nutrients and give up the bad things. Give up the soft drinks and the iced tea and the lemonades and, and um, give up the fried foods and the margarines. And uh, I can just tell you, with your age, uh, you can honestly expect to see some uh, really recognizable results in a very, very short time, 60 to 90 days. And it doesn't matter what the doctor said. If you do the right things, get rid of the bad stuff, take all 90 essential nutrients, uh, making sure you get that collagen and the glucosamine sulfate and the chondroitin sulfate, uh, you will repair your vertebrae, you will repair the cartilage, and you will repair the disc. Dr. Wallach, it just seems like every week I pick up a newspaper and I see about our young athletes having problems with their bodies falling apart. What can we give our athletes and our children so that they can be healthy and have long lives that we want as well? That's a great question because most people believe that exercise is good for you. And that was always a great question. You know, is exercise good for you? Is it necessary for health and longevity? And when you inspect this question, uh, you have to look at professional athletes who uh, spend most of their teenage years and going through university and the semi-pros and the pros uh, training and practicing and doing their events. And, and if exercise was the factor in living a long, healthful life, athletes should live longer than couch potatoes. But when you look at this critically, couch potatoes in America live to be 75.5, and the average athlete, depending on the sport and their level of competence, live to be 62 to 68, far short of what a couch potato lives to be. And of course, athletes suffer from a great many joint diseases and bone injuries and tendons and ligaments, back, neck, shoulders, ankles, knees, and hips, and have to suffer through an enormous amount of surgeries to deal with this. And athletes develop some 800 different diseases. And what is it? Why is it that athletes don't fare as well as the couch potato? Well, it's simply because athletes sweat more in five years than couch potatoes do in 75 years. And when you sweat, you're not just sweating out Gatorade, you're sweating out all 60 essential minerals. And they're called essential minerals because if they're missing for any length of time, you get some horrible degenerative disease, many of which are, are life-threatening. So you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out who's more likely to be debilitated or even die of these, these life-threatening diseases. An athlete who sweats out quarts of sweat during an event or training or practice or a couch potato who's laying on a couch in an air-conditioned den, switching the channels, yelling, honey, bring in the popcorn, I'm changing the channels. And this is very serious because the Center for Disease Control says that as many as 100,000 young athletes under the age of 30, 100,000 each year die suddenly during an event or training or exercise or immediately after an event from cardiomyopathy, heart disease and ruptured aneurysm, and we know that cardiomyopathy heart disease is due to a selenium deficiency, and ruptured aneurysms is due to a copper deficiency. So you can begin to put two and two together. Why does a 10-year-old die of a ruptured aneurysm? Well, you sweat out all of this copper, and you can't get copper from curly french fries and Pepsis. It just doesn't work. Dr. Wallach, what about arthritis? Well, arthritis is my favorite disease because it's easy to fix. Uh, it's one of the great myths that uh, the medical profession perpetuates is that uh, you can't build bone mass after the age of 50, 60, 70 years of age. You can only slow down the loss. And the reason why they say that uh, is because they try to rebuild bone mass using plain calcium, whether it's Tums or calcium citrate or carbonate or gluconate or, or lactate. And your body will not retain much or any of the calcium you supplement with in your bones without first building new bone matrix. You have to have new bone matrix. This is this, this rubbery collagen material that looks like tendon or skin, and it makes up 25 to 40 percent of our bone weight, 40 percent when you're a child and 25 percent when you're an adult. And so it's absolutely essential. If you want to deal with the wear and tear arthritis, osteoarthritis, degenerative arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis effectively, you have to take all 90 essential nutrients and the best way to do that is with Dr. Wallach's pig arthritis formula. 
remember I'm a veterinarian as well as a physician, and we learned a long time ago, maybe 100 years ago, in veterinary medicine that we could actually prevent and reverse, maybe even use the cure word in animals, uh, arthritis, simply by giving the, the animal the raw material to develop properly and to maintain and repair the joints. And so using this information that we developed in animals, if you use the same concept for human beings, I have literally seen tens of thousands of people over the years who had bone-to-bone -bone arthritis, they had osteoarthritis, they have degenerative arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, which are basically a, a joint form of osteoporosis. It's osteoporosis, the joint ends of the bones. And they've tried all kinds of medication. And of course, if you take medication, if you take a painkiller, if you take an anti-inflammatory for arthritis, essentially all you're doing is cutting the wire to the red warning light. Pain in a joint says, don't use me until you fix me. And by taking a painkiller, by taking an anti-inflammatory, which will reduce pain, you're allowing that joint to be used even though it would have been painful without the drug. And so you're wearing that joint out faster and faster and faster. And to me, it's criminally negligent for someone to be prescribed a painkiller or an anti-inflammatory for joint disease without repairing the joint at the same time. And this is where the pig arthritis formula really shines and works just like a charm in human beings. So does the same apply for bone spurs? Absolutely. Bone spurs are a manifestation of osteoporosis. A person will get bone spurs and calcium deposits when you have osteoporosis, just the opposite of what a doctor will tell you. And you need more calcium, more magnesium. You need the bone matrix. You need the collagen, the glucosamine sulfate, the chondrite and sulfate. And those bone spurs and the calcium deposits will actually re-architect your back down to a normal bone. It takes a little while. It takes uh, four to six months to pull that off. But you can uh, do it on a regular basis, absolutely. Cancer seems to be striking everywhere in our population these days. What do we have that we can help people that are facing the challenge of cancer? Well, that's a great question. Uh, back at the turn of the century, 1895, 1900, one out of 10 Americans developed cancer. Right now, it's three out of five, and by the year 2050, it's projected two out of three people are going to develop cancer in America. The onset of cancer appears uh, to be directly related to the amount of, of carcinogens. These are toxic waste either from agriculture or from the industrial waste that we find in our air and our food and our water and in the dust around us. And the lack of the ability to defend against these, these carcinogens and the most common defense mechanism that we have, the, the one that we have access to in a very economical way, are the antioxidants like selenium, like the grapeseed extract, like the green tea. You're looking at vitamin E, vitamin C, beta carotene, and avoiding fried foods and margarines and, and things that we have control of, eating as much organically grown food as possible. And according to the medical school at the University of Arizona, and this came out in JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association, December 25th, 1996. I mean, we're talking about a great Christmas gift to the American people. They did a wonderful study, 10 years. It was a double-blind study, 1,300 people. They gave the study group 250 micrograms, which is one quarter of one milligram. And we're talking an itsy, bitsy amount of selenium. They just used selenium alone. Didn't change anything else. And by giving these people 250 micrograms, one quarter of a milligram of the trace mineral selenium, they were able to reduce the risk of esophageal cancer by 71%, prostate cancer by 69%, greater than two-thirds, colon and rectal cancer by 64%, almost two-thirds. Lung cancer was reduced by 48% whether you smoked or not. And in a parallel study from the University of California, San Diego, 250 micrograms, one quarter of one milligram of selenium, the trace mineral selenium, reduced the risk of breast cancer by 50 to 80%. And the same study showed that if you already have cancer, if you take 250 micrograms of selenium every day, uh, you will, in fact, double the natural history life expectancy of a particular type of cancer. For instance, lung cancer, the natural history is about a year. Brain cancer is less than a year. Uh, uterine, ovarian, colon, uh, breast cancer is two to five years. Prostate cancer is five to eight years. Well, just by taking 250 micrograms of the trace mineral selenium every day, one quarter of one milligram, according to the University of, of Arizona's uh, medical school, uh, you can double that life expectancy just by doing that one thing. And so if you take the other antioxidants and give up margins and fried foods and sugar and caffeine and avoid as many of the agricultural waste and the toxic waste from the industry that you can, you will be able to avoid an enormous amount of cancer. 
And if you already have cancer, doing other things such as taking the um, antioxidants and getting on macrobiotic diets and, and so forth, you can add many healthful years to your life. You can certainly have a better quality of life. And many people uh, will extend their lives in a, in a great way, 10, 20, 30, 40 years. And obviously, there's no way you can look in somebody's eyes and say, you're the one that's going to live 50 years. And so people just have to do all the right things, and they're going to get the best that can be gotten from nutrition and the, the supplements. Dr. Wallach, I've been a diabetic for about 30 years. What, can, what kind of minerals should I take to help me? Okay, well, first of all, are you an adult onset type 2 diabetic or a juvenile onset type 1 diabetic? Juvenile onset type 1. You are in, insulin dependent because the definition of a juvenile onset type 1 diabetic is that you do not make any insulin, and so you will never be able to wean off of insulin. You will always have to take some insulin. But uh, there are two trace minerals, chromium and vanadium, that will make the insulin that you supplement yourself with very efficient. And most people who are juvenile onset type 1 diabetics are able to reduce the amount of insulin they require to stabilize their blood sugar uh, by supplementing with the chromium and vanadium. Normally, a person learns how to adjust their insulin by taking their blood sugar once or twice or three times a day. And so you're taught how to adjust your insulin intake. And just by following what you've been taught, uh, as you supplement with this plant-derived colloidal and the chelated chromium and vanadium, you will be able to get down to a new dosage of uh, your insulin. And the value of taking the whole pig arthritis formula is that th there's nothing worse than paying attention to your blood sugar levels and your insulin intake and then dying of a ruptured aneurysm because you didn't su supplement with copper or developing cancer because you didn't supplement with selenium. So it's very important, even though you're a diabetic, and that is your primary immediate concern, still over the long haul, uh, being a health conscious person just out of necessity, uh, you're going to have to supplement with all 90 essential nutrients. And uh, the odds are, even though you're a juvenile onset type 1 diabetic, you have every honest expectation of living to be 100 uh, symptom free if you do everything right.